This is going to be a React video and informational video about Bla Blackstone's Intelligent Network, Jake Morfino's video on March 9th, 2018, how I got my YouTube channel restored after the purge. I'm going to give you the short and sweet. You're supposed to contact him, plead your case to him, and he'll forward it to somebody because he has someone who's in the know who's contacted him outside of YouTube and says that they are, quote, a YouTube trusted flagger to escalate it to someone to actually look at it instead of ignoring our pleas because they shot down so many channels they're not reviewing a damn thing and get your channel restored okay that doesn't sound hinky or anything that doesn't sound like some are more equal than others at all okay so I'm gonna do some definitions in the video here because maybe with this may be useful but um, here we go one strike and you're out. That's when YouTube has decided to kill off your channel, terminate it. They don't care about strikes. They don't have to have a certain number of strikes before they shut down the channel. They can just disconnect it. It's hit the delete button. When you do a uh, request for review and they say, we have affirmed that we, 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 we're choosing to keep it, I'll use the exact language below. The next type is when they tell you specifically what they're flagging the channel for, which only happens a little bit when it comes to the purge victims. And it's almost every single time a video that is not objectionable. It is, uh, it is ab absolutely, it's objectively not objectionable. Uh, objectionable. Object that word. Why? Specifically to rub your nose in the fact that they can uh, shoot down a channel without reason. They're just using, oh, this is the placeholder. We're just going to pick a random video. Now, that's also the same behavior of people who work outside of YouTube and Google, who get paid a lot of money from multi-channel networks or whatever, and also from the Recording Industry of America, RIAA, and copyright infringement lawyers and that sort of thing. They'll tell YouTube, shoot the channel down, and randomly flag any video that is not in violation on purpose to give them a message. That's what's been going on for a long time. It's, it's a protection racket. When you're asked to join a multi-channel uh, multi network, sometimes you get your first flagging because you've tripped off the multi-channel network alert that's going to be contacting you. They contact you because they want you to join their multi-channel network. They want to make money off of you. And YouTube wants to make money off you too. It's the same trigger. Now here's the thing I've noticed universally. Um, contrarian channels like Blackstone Network, whatever, that monetize most of the time. These stated flat on monetizers. They get flagged for videos that are maybe in violation. I would say, arguably, they should get flagged, but they're not really something you'd flag. I mean, I don't like them, but no, you should flag. Uh, Anti-reality people bother me, but I don't see I don't see this as being a reason to do something that damn draconian. But they're monetized, so that I am assuming is the most important thing. That's a variable. They get a sudden viral video. He claimed and they get a large subscriber increase. Maybe that looks like they're faking the views and faking the subscriber count. That's maybe an excuse at YouTube. But instead of just telling people that, they just kill your channel and they, they jerk you around. What happens to small channels that aren't monetizing their videos is they put up a PayPal or GoFundMe link or maybe, and they get a sudden upswing in view count and subscribers, like I did. I got a couple of thousand things happening at once. And the channel gets shot down because, oh, you're showing some success. You're not monetized. You're not with a multi-channel network. Cacked. That's what I'm assuming. And the other thing is, X number of years ago, as everybody knows, uh, a person or several persons contacted me and said, I'm paying someone to shoot your channel down. You know, intimidation tactics. And before, uh, some of you might have also noticed also before, someone would impersonate my channels and go mess with people. And then demand, you know, money or favors or whatever. Uh, to not do it anymore. Basically a protection racket. A RICO activity. So, and YouTube is not really any better because if you pay them money, this is how you do it. Yeah. How you get your channel back for real. You pay Google and YouTube to let their channel go back up and tell them to stop allowing flaggings and send everything to your lawyer. And basically you get representation that's independent so that there's no emotional connection. A lawyer will work. Uh, reputation management companies, media management companies, or multi-channel networks who represent you and just make it to where you can't get flagged anymore. That's what happens if you're doing all sorts of things. This has become a problem on YouTube if you do video games. Every single frame of a video game while you're playing it is technically copyrighted because it's derived from content that is 100% under copyright. 
So every single frame of a video, if they pay attention to it, is an excuse to flag your channel. So to keep that from happening, because that's ridiculous, people would join multi-channel networks for representation. It's a big business. It makes a butt ton of money based on the fact that you can be flagged technically for legitimate reasons. Even though you're just playing a video game. It could be on the screen for a couple of seconds. Uh, one YouTube channel had a video taken down because Prince, a Prince song was playing in the background while the kid was dancing. And it got flagged. And the company was aggressive about it. And it became a lawsuit. And they won. Uh, you can look up H3H uh, Productions. They had the same thing. It's an example of fair use. It's not legal for you to flag the channel. It's not legal for you to sue these people. You can't win in court. Leave them alone. Well, you know, some are more equal than others. You can still harass someone to death, literally or figuratively. And that is big business on YouTube and Google as well. And they know it. They've known it for a very long time. They're top contributors or YouTube heroes or whatever, trusted flat YouTube flaggers. Been around for a long time. And these individuals are supposed to work basically for free, which means eventually they sell their services. So I'm going to recapitalize whatever the word is, uh, the Blackstone Intelligence Network March 9th video. Get somebody who's willing to help you, who goes outside of band, out, you know, off the side of YouTube, to help you, because YouTube won't, through Twitter or whatever. And you can look up a list of people who are employed at YouTube and Google and contact them. But he wants to be the go-between. Now, this has two things to it. Number one, it stinks in every way. Number two, this is exactly what I would do if I was working at YouTube and I was watching this happen and seeing them doing this and wanting to fix it. But that still means it's some are more equal than others and you have to know somebody. The last time that anything like this happened that I know of that happened to me personally was, everybody knows about this, I had a channel that ended up being a guinea pig channel for a particular behavior, uh, impersonator channels. Somebody would set up a bunch of impersonator channels because they got a hold of a tool at YouTube that would let you create a hundred channels at the same time every couple of days. And they were doing that. And that finally got the attention of somebody who like, okay, this is a real problem. First of all, they took off the tool, I'm assuming. I haven't checked it recently. I'm thinking about it. And then um, they started using it as an algorithm. And also they started making it to where, you know, when they were using your channel as a test bed, they would divert flaggings so that they wouldn't immediately happen. If you get flagged three times, your channel's dead. Doesn't matter if anybody reviews it or sees it. It's an automated system. Well, no, that doesn't happen if the channel's in protected status or whatever it's called. That's the same thing that happens if you have a multi-channel network or a lawyer. YouTube and Google can choose to do that because they actually acknowledge, yes, someone is coming along with a bunch of friends and flagging your channel or whatever. Um, and I got that status by accident, and it stuck, I guess. I didn't get anything after the first or one or two communications. And a lot of people since then have claimed to be that person at YouTube or whatever. That doesn't make any sense. That's not real. But thanks for all of you for trying. A lot of all, people have also said, well, I pay money to shoot your channels down. Well, that's nice, but this last channel shot down was not caused by that at all. So stop claiming that in the comment section. And of course, everybody's going to do that below. I'm the one who did it. And other people are still doing it. They're coming on. Well, tell me about all your hidden channels so I can flag them. Um, that, again, if you do that behavior, my channel and many others are the reason for it. If you flag a channel frivolously and it's obvious, all they do is take down your MAC address, IP address, and all the other data and start removing your ability to use that particular proxy, which is the reason this person changed proxy to another country. It's because people like that attack people like me. But this last thing, the purge, the only thing, again, the only thing it seems to have in common is money and making YouTube look bad. YouTube showing up in the comment, in the uh, in their own results, showing fake news as the primary thing on YouTube is bothering them, even if it's you debunking it. That's the only thing I can figure. And the only thing Blake Stone, uh, Blackstone has posted is that you have to know somebody. That's not an improvement. Okay, that's my murmuring. Now I'm going to say skip to the 9 minute and 40 second mark to actually hear something useful about if you want to get your channel restored and it's been shot down totally with the standard substandard response, you can contact Blackstone, Blackstone Intelligence Network. I'll leave a link below and you can ask him to forward it to have it fixed. But he said he's not going to help trolls. That means anybody who debunks him is not going to get any help. 
So all of us uh, anti-contrarians, we're screwed. Unless we get in a voice. And remember, originally this was caused by what we assumed was a bunch of SJW bullcrap. Nobody really knows what's going on. I don't either. I give up. That's it. That's the entire review. Take it for what little it's worth. Just mostly ranting and being frustrated. I'm not going to bother worrying about it. And a bunch of channels in my list of channels killed in the YouTube purge of 2018. I'll include the playlist if you want to watch it. As well as some from 2016. The only thing they all have in common is look for a weak channel. Look for a channel that has a sudden surge in views and a sudden surge in uh, subscribers. And then shoot it down deliberately by letting the system flag a video that has no business being flagged. It's the only thing in common if you're not monetized. So the only advice I'm giving is monetize your damn channel for YouTube and let them put ads on it. Maybe that'll solve it. I'm, I never would do that, but I'm actually considering doing that because I'm sick to death of their bullshit. And I'm sorry, I'm not contacting anybody through Twitter to, kill, to keep my channel, for, channel from getting killed. That's not the hacker method. That's how lawyers work. I'm not going to do it. And another video, I don't know if it was him, but him or another channel, basically said, oh, I just had a lawyer fix it. I think it was another channel. Neither of those are actually appealing to the democratization of the Internet. The hacker culture of the Internet that built what you're using right now is not based on who you know. It's based on how, what you know and what you do to get past this. To quote one of my favorite YouTubers, I will learn the trick. I will not leave my subscribers. True A. Smiley. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.